Hello. This is a film developed by the midwives and obstetricians of Maidstone and Tunbridge Wells as an information film for women and their partners to explain the procedure known as external cephalic version, or ECV. During pregnancy, babies will turn round into different positions many times, but by 36 weeks, most babies will have settled down into the head down position. 3%, however, will be in the breech position, and babies that are in that position by 37 weeks are unlikely to turn round by themselves. It is, however, possible to manually turn a breech baby into the head down position using a technique called external cephalic version, or ECV. We hope that this film will explain this procedure and answer most commonly asked questions. So, firstly, who can have an ECV? Point one, 37 weeks normal pregnancy. Provided the pregnancy is straightforward with no problems and has reached term, which is any time after 37 weeks, an ECV can be offered. Point two, good growth. It's not normally suitable if there have been any problems with the baby's growth. Point three, previous caesarean. It is not normally suitable to turn a baby if you've had a caesarean section before. Point four, vaginal bleeding or water's broken. It is also not suitable if you've had any vaginal bleeding or if your waters have broken. There may be reasons why you cannot have an ECV. Your obstetrician will discuss these reasons with you. There are many benefits to an ECV. Extensive research has shown that an ECV is safe for mum and for baby. Point one, reduces the need for caesarean section. A successful ECV reduces the need for a caesarean section and with it the associated risks to mothers of major surgery. Point two, reduces risks of surgery to mother and baby. This is important because although a caesarean section is very safe, there is more risk of complications such as infections, thrombosis and haemorrhage and also a longer recovery time from surgery compared to having a normal birth. Point three, baby is less likely to experience breathing problems. In addition, a normal birth also means that a baby is less likely to experience breathing problems at birth and is also more likely to breastfeed successfully. Point four, reduces need for caesarean section in future pregnancies and risks associated with scar on the womb will be avoided. It also reduces the risks associated with having a scar on the womb in a future labour and the need for caesarean section in future pregnancies. There are three things you should be aware of when having an ECV. The ECV is always carried out on the delivery suite. This is so that an emergency caesarean section be carried out if the baby is unhappy. However, this is very rare. There is a possibility, eight in a thousand babies, that the baby's heartbeat will slow down after the procedure. But this usually resolves after a few minutes and we monitor the baby's heartbeat to ensure that this has not happened. A few women may find that it stimulates labour, but this would not be a problem as after 37 weeks the baby is not classed as premature. For mums that have a rhesus negative blood group, they will be offered an injection of anti-D. This is in case there's a mixing of mums and baby's blood during the procedure. You may wonder if there are alternative ways that can help the baby turn. Some people believe that getting into certain positions, such as all fours, can help the baby turn in late pregnancy. However, there's no significant research to say that this will definitely work. There are also complementary therapies available, such as a Chinese technique called moxibustion. However, as with many complementary therapies, this has not been well evaluated and should be carried out by a registered practitioner. But there is certainly good evidence to recommend having an ECV, and at Maystone and Tunbridge Wells, we have a 75% or three in four babies success rate of turning a baby round into the head down position. So let's move on to the procedure, as Maya Donna and her partner go through the process of ECV. When Mia Donna arrives in the delivery suite, the midwife will assess that all is well for the procedure to be carried out. She will do baseline observations of temperature, blood pressure, pulse and a urine test. She will then feel her tummy to check to see that the baby is still in the breech position and then she will attach the monitor to pick up the baby's heartbeat for at least 20 minutes. If all these observations are normal, she will discuss and give a small injection of tibutylin. This is a short acting muscle relaxant which makes it easy to turn the baby but it has no effect directly on the baby. Then Helena, the obstetrician, will explain the procedure once again and confirm with a portable scan that the baby is indeed breech. So let's move on to the procedure. I'm Helena and I'm an obstetric specialist registrar. I'm here to talk you through what is happening in the video. To start the procedure, we will once again confirm the presentation and the position of the baby, the correlation between the spine and the baby's head. We encourage maximum relaxation as we discussed earlier. And now I will start by applying pressure 
to the fetal buttock. This can be found slightly uncomfortable, but should not cause too much of discomfort. I would stop procedure should it become too uncomfortable. Again, we will try to encourage the baby's buttocks out of the pelvis, and I consider this to be the most important part of the procedure. In majority of cases, we're aiming for so-called forward somerset, which is what we are doing right now. Alternatively, should that not be successful, we can try the opposite manure, back flip of the baby. If we're lucky, we get the baby to kick. And here we are, the baby is kicking, which is, in majority of cases, making this procedure easier for us and add to the success. The baby is working with us and now I continue to apply pressure to the baby's buttock and I'm guiding the buttock upwards and at the same time I'm gently guiding the baby's head into the pelvis. I'm pretty sure that the head is in the pelvis and now I will confirm the presentation with the scan. Here we are, the head is down. Now we'll make the patient comfortable for the 30 minutes fetal monitoring and then we'll make plans for further follow-up. Following the ECV, the midwife will monitor the baby's heartbeat further to ensure that all is well. OK, let's speak to Layla, the obstetrician, and ask her her feelings about ECV and what the options are if we're unable to turn the baby round. In my, my experience, most women that go through ECV are very positive about the experience of ECV. Normally when I see patients before ECV, when I'm talking to them about the procedure, I explain that it's uncomfortable, but it's not painful. It's just a little bit more uncomfortable than the routine examination you might have with your midwife or obstetrician in the clinic. It is a very safe procedure. There's been a very large study done on ECV where it's estimated that 8 per 1,000 babies that are turned may ch show a change in their heart rate following the procedure, but only 1 per 1,000 will require emergency caesarean section. However, in my whole career, I've never had to do an emergency caesarean section following ECV, and I've now done many hundreds of this procedure, and neither of my colleagues ever done an emergency caesarean section following ECV. It doesn't always work. Uh, sometimes um, babies can be in different forms of breech um, presentation, so they can be um, an extended breech or a flex breech, and it may be that there's slightly different rates of success with each of those, but our rates overall within this trust are 75% success rate. Um, in the situation where either the baby reverts back to a breech situation, which can sometimes occur, or the ECV fails, we can talk about doing a repeat ECV or using moxibustion, which is a Chinese therapeutic medicine that you can talk to your midwife about. Well, the main benefit of having an ECV is in avoiding caesarean section. Um, we suggest that avoidance of caesarean section is best because it makes it much easier to look after your baby, but also any older siblings that you have, um, having not had major surgery. But in addition to that, there are risks associated with caesarean section for this delivery, such as bleeding, infection, blood clot, but also for subsequent pregnancies, because whilst we support women going through vaginal birth after caesarean section, we know they're slightly less likely to achieve that in a subsequent pregnancy. I feel so positively about ECV that when my sister recently had a breech baby, I suggested that she have an ECV and she found it a very positive experience. Now let's ask the parents how they felt about the ECV. It was a little bit painful, but not as painful as I thought it was going to be. Um, yeah, the whole thing was over really quickly actually. I was expecting her to be in a lot more pain and discomfort. I know it was a little bit you know, painful, but it seemed to happen quite quickly. And, uh, and I'm just so happy that you know, the baby is in the correct position now and she won't have to have a cesarean section because that would be you know, a no-no for us, really. So. I, um, I definitely recommend them having this procedure. Definitely, it's definitely worth doing. Now let's ask the midwife how she felt about it and if she would recommend an ECV. 
My name's Sarah Gregson and I'm the consultant midwife at Maiton and Tunbridge Wells NHS Trust. Now we've just seen two really satisfied customers here today and in fact all of us in the room we're really pleased what's happened and that the baby's turned. Most ECVs are successful, about three quarters of them in fact, um, but we are always really thrilled when the baby turns because this means now that my donor can continue with her plans for going ahead and having a normal um, straightforward birth. As we know, cesarean sections are very safe nowadays. However, any surgery, particularly major surgery, does carry risks with it. So we would only recommend someone having a cesarean section if they really, really needed it. Finally, I'd just like to say that the ECV that we've seen here today wasn't in fact a particularly easy one. You know, if someone's had a baby before and they're on their second or their third pregnancy, quite often it's the slightest of touches to get the baby to go round. And as we saw, my Donna's baby took a little bit of persuasion for that to happen. Nevertheless, as you've seen, Maya Donna was very happy with the experience and feels that it was well worthwhile. And I think I, for one, would say that if I personally had a breech baby, I would always go for a, an ECV and certainly if it was somebody who was dear to me, I would always recommend that they tried an ECV. So Mia's ECV was a great success. She'll now go home and await labour and there's no reason why she shouldn't go on to have a normal delivery. We hope that this film has answered any of your questions about having an ECV. If you have any further questions, please ask your midwife. Thank you for watching.